<laughs> well, this shirt is useless now, isn't it? What's up, thrill seekers? Today, I am bringing you guys a review of Iron Rattler, which is an RMC at my home park, Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. So, um, like I said, I'm doing a review of Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, uh, which is my home park, um, as well as uh, right alongside SeaWorld San, uh, San Antonio. But I know that it is my first review of the season, so I'm kind of going to uh, explain to you guys how I'm going to do these reviews. Um, I'm not doing them in any particular order unless you guys want me to. So p comment down below, should I do no order or should I do like one park and then a review of that park and then go to the next park with reviews? Um, like what do you want me to do? Right now I'm just going to kind of do in random order, um, but like... You know, one day will be Iron Rattler, the next one will probably be Hang Time, and then after that, I don't even know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, comment down below, though, if you want me to do, like, which one you want me to do. I'll also leave a poll right up here in the corner, um, like, order or no order. So, yeah. Anyways, in terms of how these, um, uh, in terms of how these reviews are going to be structured, I'm going to be kind of looking at three main things. Uh, first, I'm going to look at the stats um, and any like interesting facts about the coaster, see if there's any record breaking or just if they're good stats, if they're fast, slow, whatever. Um, next, I'm going to look at uh, any sort of theming or scenery um, that goes for anything like around the coaster, if the coaster uses the quarry wall, wink wink, um, and if the, are, if the coaster has some sort of storyline, if it has good theming in the station, all of that kind of stuff, that's going to be the second thing that I'm going to look at. And then finally, I will um, look at the POV and see and just explain why I like some parts and I don't like some parts. Um, and then I'll go even more in depth with why or why not I like um, some different parts of the coasters or in the coaster um, in kind of my pros and cons type of section, um, which will be after the POV. And then I will give it two rankings. I will rank it first. Um, in the category, just compared to other RMCs for this, other b and floor lists, other um, anything, you know, other coasters like it. Um, and then I'm going to give it an overall rating. Congratulations! You just watched the entire explanation. Oh, sick! What do I get? Literally nothing. You just wasted your life. So let's get into it. First off with the stats. So Iron Rattler has a height of 179 feet with a drop of 171 feet. Um, it goes through 3,266 feet of track over which it reaches speeds of 70 miles an hour, goes through one inversion, and finally the um, drop angle um, is 81 degrees. So it's not like insanely impressive stats or anything like that, although for an RMC, um, it does kind of rank on the higher tier in, in terms of like height um, wise. It's definitely kind of taller for an RMC, um, especially for more modern RMCs in terms of like you know, the littler ones like um, Twisted Timbers or Storm Chaser, um, where they're around 100-ish feet. Um, this one is definitely taller than most. Um, but it doesn't really do too much for the ride other than like the drop, um, which is super awesome, and I'll get to that later. From there, um, there is the scenery and the overall like aesthetic of the coaster. Um, and this goes to theming, um, 
what you see while riding it and also how the coaster looks when you're not riding it. Um, so first of all, the storyline of this coaster, from my knowledge, obviously I'm not like a professional, I didn't look it up before, just from what I got, is um, there's a team of people and they're trying to go and basically catch a rattlesnake. Um, and the rattlesnake is like going crazy, all of that kind of stuff, um, and they're trying to catch it. And that's kind of, from my knowledge, the story of Iron Rattler. Um, and yeah, the theme isn't really too amazing. Um, the station building is not themed at all. Although when you first get in line, um, it definitely is kind of an older Western, uh, old Western type of theme. It is in um, Crack Axle Canyon, um, which is kind of the old west section of the park um so it does have that going for it um it has some like rocks in the queue line and some um kind of wooden fencing and all of that kind of stuff um really the only main uh section of theming that there is um is there is a kind of like a truck um as well as like a barn with some painting on the side of it um and some jars of like snake guts and that kind of thing um and that's pretty much right straight ahead when you enter the line um there's that but other than that there's not really too much theming and then in terms of how the ride looks and um, what you see while well on the ride, um, which really that portion I will get to a little bit later in the video, um, but the ride looks amazing. Um, there are definitely lots of places in the park where you can just look and see the lift hill going up with the big IR on the side of the lift hill. Um, and it looks amazing, especially in sunset, because the sun kind of sets a little bit to the left of the coaster. Um, so depending on where you stand, you can get some really, really awesome views of it. Um, and it's definitely just adds to the skyline of the park. It's definitely one of the tallest coasters in the park. Um, I'm not sure if it's the tallest, but I think it's, it's definitely one of the tallest. Um, I think it might be the tallest um, coaster in the park. But anyways, um, you can definitely see it from pretty much all over, and it's, it's a pretty cool thing to look at. And now getting into the POV, um, where I will kind of just be breaking down the POV, um, and saying just briefly what I like and dislike. Um, and this POV is my POV, so that's pretty cool. Um, but anyways, let me go get the POV. So you pull out of the station um, and kind of just go through some straight track. You can see the um, maintenance barn on your right hand side there. Um, and then you go down a little bit of a drop type of thing, just kind of a turn um, to the left to get into the lift hill, which takes you 179 feet up. Once you get to the top of the lift hill, you go down one of the, or maybe even the best, no, just one of the, one of the best drops um, on any roller coaster. It is a 81 degree drop, um, so pretty decently steep, um, and it does have like a little twist in it, which gives you amazing laterals and insane airtime, especially in the back row. Um, so probably one of, um, arguably the best, uh, coaster drop on any coaster. From there, you go through kind of a little shaded type of area, which gives you some good head chopper moments before you go up into an airtime hill under the, uh, under the inversion and on top of the quarry wall, uh, where a lot of this coaster takes place. You're going to go up into a overbank curve, which is pretty fun, um, and then another one which dives you off of the quarry wall, and you swoop up into the first and only inversion on the coaster. Honestly, this inversion is pretty awesome. Uh, you do get definitely get a lot of hang time on it, just because you're going back up onto the quarry wall, so uh, you definitely do lose a lot of speed, so you get really good hang time. 
Um, so yeah, it's a really good inversion. From there, go up into a little airtime hill and then into some nice overbank turns, which is pretty cool. Um, it does definitely lose a lot of speed in that at that moment, which isn't great. Uh, but from there, it goes into arguably the best part of the ride, which is two back-to-back -back airtime hills, the second one diving you down off of the quarry wall, um, and that gives you an insane amount of floater, or sorry, flowjector airtime, um, maybe even ejector depending on where you sit. Uh, from there, you kind of just swoop around into a tunnel, which sometimes has lights and sometimes doesn't. Uh, if it does have lights, though, they do turn them off at night, um, usually at least. So at night, it is a pitch black tunnel, which is pretty cool. Um, and then you just go out of the tunnel and uh, slam into the brake run. So getting into kind of the pros and cons element um, of this review. First, um, I'm going to kind of just alternate. Uh, so the first pro is definitely the drop. The drop is insane. It is probably one of, if not the best coaster drop um, that um, out there. Uh, some people say that it's the best and some people say that it's one of the best. I can definitely name at least one coaster drop that I think is personally better, but it is still an insanely amazing drop. You get some great laterals um, on that little twist and especially in the front row, you get an insane amount of awesome airtime. From there, you kind of go into a little bit of a con, um, and that little bit of a con is um, just going on top of the quarry wall for the first time. That little airtime pop gives pretty much no airtime, um, and also the overbanked turns are kind of boring just because you are on top of the quarry wall, and you, even though it's really towards the beginning of the ride, you already kind of lost a little bit of speed, um, so you do kind of go over them a little bit slower than maybe you should, but they're still pretty fun, um, but it is definitely a con of this coaster. Although, um, it does kind of tie into a little bit of a pro, which is just the use of the quarry wall in general. Um, this is really the first time it uses it. After the drop, it kind of goes up um, onto it, and it is an amazing... It's just... It's like, it's great that it uses the quarry wall. Um, a lot of coasters in the park do, including, um, of course, Iron Rattler, and the other notable one is Superman Krypton Coaster, which uses the quarry wall a little bit. Um, and both of the coasters definitely benefit from using the quarry wall, um, so that's another pro of this coaster. The next con is the first dive off of the quarry wall. Um, it is definitely a fun element, but it is definitely not great. Um, it kind of just like whimpers down. It's not anything super forceful or super insane. Um, it kind of just, you know, goes down gracefully, um, which is totally not like the second one. Um, but the first is kind of boring. Then going into another pro, which is the inversion. The inversion is insane, as I said um, briefly during the POV. It gives great hang time, um, especially because you did lose a little bit of speed while going up into it um, and up onto the quarry wall. So it's definitely a really, really good element. You kind of do get a little bit of a head chopper moment just with some of the support beams um, holding the inversion up while you're going through it, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, just a, overall a really great inversion. Now we get into really the biggest con, um, and that is the pacing once it gets up onto the quarry wall for the second time. Um, I get that it did want to use the quarry wall again, especially because that's what the original Rattler did, um, and it is kind of following its path, um, but it does definitely, like, the speed definitely does die down a lot in this, um, in this section. It goes through kind of an airtime hill, um, and 
and I said kind of an airtime hill because it really doesn't give like any airtime whatsoever. Um, and then you go up into two little um, overbanked turns, which are kind of snappy, but again, still kind of boring. So overall, this whole section is kind of a con um, just because of how slow you're going and that's really the main con of this coaster is that it does definitely have some pacing issues. From there, going into really the biggest pro, which is the dive off of the quarry wall for the second time um, going into the tunnel. And it's an insane element, probably one of the best elements on any coaster that I have ridden. Um, it gives some insane airtime, especially in the back row. Um, and yeah, it's, it's great. You just dive right down off of it. Um, going into the tunnel as well is definitely a pro. So yeah, just this whole little section from the drop to the break run is definitely a pro. And then the final con, um, which is the length of the ride. Um, it is definitely a relatively short ride. Um, I think it's around 45-ish seconds, 30 to 45 seconds long, which is not very long for a roller coaster. Um, and I say that from the drop to the brake run. Um, so it's not really a very long ride. It does feel like it's over super quickly. Um, and it does really like slam into the brake run, um, which isn't great. I think it would definitely be awesome if it just had a little bit um, more to it, but I mean, I get that with the space that they had, they couldn't really do too much um, else with it, but it is definitely still a con. And then the final pro um, is the restraints. I think that the restraints are definitely, definitely, definitely better than the um, RMC restraints that we have now, um, especially on like Twisted Timbers and Steel Vengeance. Um, just because these trains are made by Gerslauer, so they do have like kind of more rounded padded restraints um, and they do not have shin guards or even if they do, um, they're not very noticeable. Um, so I do like these restraints. If you do get uh, get room, which is a little bit hard on Iron Rattler just because a lot of the ride operators do staple you. Um, but if you do end up getting room um, on Iron Rattler, then it is crazy. Um, and the restraints definitely do allow you to get a little bit of room if you know how to. So that's it for my pros and cons. Now for the two rankings. First, um, ranking is in the category. Um, and sometimes this ranking will be higher and sometimes it'll be lower than um, the overall. Um, and I think in the category, um, Iron Rattler gets around like an 8.5 five or an eight. Um, I say that because there are definitely um, a couple of RMCs that I definitely do like better, um, like for example um, Steel Vengeance or um, Steel Vengeance or uh, New Texas Giant I like a lot better, um, but it is definitely still kind of higher tier, so that's why I gave it like a relatively high score um, in the category because it definitely is a higher tier RMC, but there are definitely a couple that are, in my opinion, better. And finally, for its overall ranking, I'm going to give it a 9.5. Um, and I'm actually, no, just a 9. Um, I'm giving it this score because I think that it could do a little bit better um, in terms of like, it could definitely fix the pacing issues and it could definitely be a longer ride. But overall, I always have fun on this coaster and it's definitely the best in the park. Um, so it does deserve a very high score, um, but it's not a 10 just because of, of course, the pacing issues and the length of it. Um, it's still an amazing coaster though, so that's why it's give it getting a 9. And that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed me ranking Iron Rattler at Six Flags Fiesta Texas. Um, definitely comment down below what are your thoughts. 
um, on Iron Rattler. Do you think I gave it a good score or do you think I gave it a bad score? Um, what do you what do you think? And I will probably be replying to a couple. So definitely comment below. Anyways, definitely um, check out my um, my Six Wives Fiesta Texas vlog, which I did a bit ago, um, and that will be up here in the corner. Um, also, check out my other reviews that I will be doing very soon. Um, I will leave my review playlist right up there in the corner right about now. There we go. Um, right there in the corner. So definitely click on that um, to see some of my other reviews um, that I have done or will be doing. So, yeah, that's really it. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash the thumbs up button. And I will see you all next time. Peace. Out.